Toronto versus Hamilton. Where should you live? Well, in this video here, we're going to be diving into the cost of living, the real estate, the education, transportation, the parks, and more so you can better answer that question. If you're new here, my name is Matthew. I'm a local realtor and this is my channel where I share everything about what it's like living in Hamilton and the surrounding regions. And in today's video, we're gonna be comparing and contrasting living in Toronto to living in Hamilton. So let's just jump on into it. Overall, Hamilton has a total population of 771,000 people and it's located just on the tip of Lake Ontario and it's about a one hour Hour from the border of Niagara Falls and about one hour to Toronto. Whereas Toronto, on the other hand, is just located a little bit more northeast, also on Lake Ontario, and it is the largest city in Canada with a population of 2,842,000 people as of 2021. Now, one of the first factors that's going to impact your decision on which city is right for you is the cost of living. And as we can see here with the data from the Economic Research Institute is that Toronto is 14.5% more expensive to live in than Hamilton with the food being more expensive both just to eat out as well as to grab groceries. However, on the flip side to that, you can see that transportation is a bit more affordable, which brings me on to the next category, the public transportation it offers its residents. And the very first score let's take a look at is the walk score. Now, both in the Toronto downtown core and the Hamilton downtown core are going to be great spots to walk and on average Hamilton City as a whole was rated a 50 walk score while Toronto's was rated a 61 and while they both have great walking in the downtown course as you move further and further out from the downtown core this is where Toronto's just gonna be a bit better for walking around then as for the public transportation scores Hamilton received a 45 whereas Toronto had a score of 78. Now both cities here have an expansive bus line and bikes for you to rent for that last mile transportation. However, Toronto is just gonna offer more variety, more frequent times of buses, as well as the Toronto TTC subway, allowing you more options to get around the city. And then the final transportation we'll quickly look at is the bikeability of the city. And here Hamilton was rated a 50 in, where Toronto was rated a 61. Now this is really gonna depend on what you mean by bikeability, as Toronto is definitely a better city to bike to work or bike to get some errands. However, if you're just looking for a bike ride on some backcountry roads or on a dirt road like mountain biking, Hamilton might be the better city for you. Now, of course, these scores are just averages of the city. So if you're interested in a certain neighborhood or certain addresses scores, feel free to send me a message. I'd be happy to help you figure that out. Other than that, let's move on to the next category, the housing. Now, historically, Hamilton has been the more affordable place to buy real estate in both for detached townhomes and condos. And that still remains true today. As you can see over the last 10 years, Hamilton has continually been more affordable than Toronto. As on average, if we break it down into detached homes, townhomes and condos, we can see that detached homes are 61% more expensive in Toronto, townhomes happen to be 37% more expensive, and condos are 28 more expensive when you compare the median sold price for each of these cities here. However, with that said, Toronto's still gonna have a variety of different homes available in those more affordable price points, allowing buyers to get in the market. As, as you can see here, the total sales that have happened in the last 12 months, and as we can see, the majority have been above that $1 million mark. However, there's still a lot of options in Hamilton and Toronto that are between that $500,000 to $1 million mark. So if you're looking to get a more detailed analysis of the real estate market in either Toronto or Hamilton, feel free to send me a message. I'd be happy to get that started on you. 
Otherwise, let's take a look now into the education systems offered in both Toronto and Hamilton. And in order to best compare and rank these cities' education systems, I'm going to be using the Fraser Institute rankings, which takes the Ontario standardized test, puts it into an index to see how it compares against the other schools. And for elementary schools, Hamilton had a total of 111 schools with an average of 5.64, whereas Toronto, on the other hand, had a close to 200 schools and was rated a 6.72. Now, of course, these are both large cities with a vast selection of schools to choose from. So if you're interested in learning more about the Fraser Institute rankings, check the link down in the description there, or also just reach out to the different family members and faculty members of each of these schools, of course, to get a complete picture of the education systems. But other than the public and Catholic elementary schools and high schools, there's some great secondary schools also to choose from. In Hamilton, you have McMaster University as well as Mohawk College. And then out in Toronto, you have University of Toronto, Toronto Metropolitan University, formerly known as Ryerson University, and George Brown College, just to name a few. Now, one of my favorite things about living in both Toronto and Hamilton happens to be the sports team scenes around there. As you have a bunch of home teams you can root for. As when you're living in Hamilton, not only do you have the Hamilton Bulldogs that are a OHL hockey league, but you also have the Hamilton Honey Badgers, the Toronto Rock, which is a lacrosse team based out of Hamilton. I know it's ironic based on the name, as well as the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Then in Toronto, you have the Tiger Cats rivals in the Toronto Argonauts, but you also have the major sports teams of the Toronto Raptors, the Toronto Maple Leafs, of course, the Blue Jays, and the Toronto Football Club. Then another thing I absolutely love about living in Toronto and Hamilton happens to be all the green spaces and parks you can go out and enjoy. And oftentimes, you don't really think about this activity here when thinking about the city of Hamilton or the city of Toronto. But in reality, Hamilton is the world's waterfall capital as it has the most waterfalls in its borders. And you can explore this in a variety of different parks. My personal favorite parks would be Spencer's Gorge, which encompasses Webster Falls, which is perhaps Hamilton's most iconic waterfall. But you also have Two's Falls, which is the tallest waterfall in Hamilton. And then the best part is if you just keep on hiking, you'll stumble into Dundas Peak and the amazing hiking trail and beautiful views that has to offer you. But other than that, you'll also find Confederation Park in Hamilton, which offers a variety of different beaches, as well as walking paths along Lake Ontario. But it's also home to Adventure Village, which is where you can find a variety of different activities from batting cages to mini putt, or you can go check out Wild Waterworks, which is an outdoor water park for you and your family to enjoy in the summertime. Then as for Toronto's top parks, I'd recommend you check out when living there. First and foremost happens to be High Park, which is some of the largest and most popular park found in the city for good reason. As this stretches from Bloor Street down the Queensway, and this huge park is somewhere you, you can explore for days and still not see everything. Then another iconic park you can enjoy while living in Toronto is the Toronto Islands and Beaches. As the islands are a shady, pleasant place with large lawns, beautiful gardens and some of the best beaches in Toronto and best part is is it's easily accessible from downtown via just a short ride on regularly scheduled ferries and as you can see no matter where you choose to live Hamilton or Toronto there's going to be a variety of different great green spaces for you to enjoy a few other similarities is one there's gonna be great health care both in Toronto and Hamilton as they're both leading the province and the country and both just patient care as well as advanced medical research but also in these cities here, you're gonna find lots of job opportunities because of how expansive they are for a variety of different skill levels. And then finally, you'll find in both Toronto and Hamilton an international airport. While Toronto's is bigger, Hamilton does offer some flights to those routine destinations that are most common. So let me ask you the question again, which city is right for you, Toronto or Hamilton? comment down below and if you're still undecided and have a few more questions feel free to send me a message i'd be happy to help you out 
But if you're thinking about moving to Hamilton and want to dive in deeper and understand and compare and contrast the different areas of Stony Creek, Waterdown, Ancaster, Flamborough, and Dundas, the next video I recommend you go check out is my video breaking down the pros and cons of each of those neighborhoods. So you can find that video right here. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day.